Hi friends, I'm Maria Miligora. Welcome to my channel. Today we're talking about Miller Harris. I've heard of the brand. I've encountered one of their perfumes. The first one I encountered was Rose Silence, which was a free gift with the purchase of some fashion magazine when I was traveling in Europe, it was years ago. My first encounter was not impressive enough. Rose Silence seemed to me like such a generic rose water kind of scent, something that I find quite common in just face mists, all kinds of rose water based lotions and things like that, that I didn't really deem it um, worth even keeping, to be honest. I either gave it away or sold. I think I gave it away. Um, and it just, it seemed to me like just one of those other generic one note kind of body sprays. Little did they know that Miller Harris quite a wide range of fragrances and it's a fairly well known, I would say niche, um, English brand. They claim to be clean brand. Though some of their claims, like them claiming they have no hydrogen peroxide in their perfumes, leave me a little bit baffled. I don't know if, if any of you are more um, familiar with perfume chemistry than I am, maybe you can enlighten me. When did we add? Um, what formulas can have hydrogen peroxide in, in perfume sprays? Because I've never heard of that, to be honest. And if that's true, if that's not really a common ingredient either way, claiming that you don't put it in, to me it's almost the same as like, oh, it doesn't have, you know, the Karari poison, it doesn't have cyanide, it doesn't have mercury in it. So I, I went with claims of clean beauty and high quality raw materials from all brands, Miller Harris is not an exception, I'm yet to see any verifiable evidence. So they say they do, we can't in any fashion verify that though, so it's just gonna be up in the air because I hear it way too often from various PR marketing departments and I'm yet to see, you know, anything behind the lip service, but we'll, we'll let it slide. They claim to be environmentally conscious. I guess at least their marketing is not dumb, <laughs> you know, it's progressive enough, their marketing departments what they actually do behind the scenes, I'm not quite sure. Let me double uh, double check on their website. Sustainability in mind. Do, 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 do. Plastic bottles in our Bath & Body range are made of recycled post-consumer product. Well, that's what most, just to, you know, most plastic bottles are now recyclable. <laughs> so I'm not sure if they can, if that's like metal worth. Tertiary packaging such as shrink wraps and coverings whenever possible, fine. Um, so does Frederick Mall and so, so does a, a lot of other brands. Um, I think the, the, the plastic, this kind of like shrink, right? Like the, the one that makes such crispy sounds. It's, I don't think it's really even required anymore for transportation, safety or anything. I think it's purely uh, a bit of an activism of, as of consumerist culture. Uh, people find this kind of sealed packages to be I guess, quote unquote, delightful. Um, I don't because it's it lasts exactly one second, and then you're like you contributed so much to the whole production of that of that plastic and the wrappings, and how many millions and millions of packages are going to be wrapped in that plastic that is not recyclable. Yeah, does not that those three seconds of of that crisp sound? To be honest, for me, not really worth it. But you know. They try to go against the, the grind because they do hear marketing departments claim that in their market studies, a lot of people want for that little piece of environmental hazard to be there. So Miller Harris say that they try to go against sort of against that wind of consumerism and not use as much plastic. So before we switch the fragrances, one more piece of um, my 20 cents when it comes to, oh God help me, selling 
two milliliter samples. So this was a gift. So basically this video is, sponsor, is sponsored by you, my dear subscribers who send me samples of things that you want to review on this channel. By the way, if you're interested in like splitting the bottle or sharing something with me and you're curious what I think about it, the, my blogger address is in the description below. Just shoot me a message, let me know like if you want to do it, let me know who you are, just, you know, just the ma male safety, that's all. And I'll be happy to, you know, to review something for you. So basically we got here a subscriber sponsored review. Um, but if not for that, I'm not sure how exactly I would be able to review that brand because the collection of their eight milliliter samples, which is 16 milliliters, costs almost $50. For 16, 16 milliliters, $50 charge. It's a bit bonkers, if you ask me. And that's something that I noticed with, it's not, they're not alone in this. Uh, Miller Harris is as guilty as a lot of other brands that the more I see that in brands, when they start selling these teeny tiny spits of samples, the more I come to a purely pragmatic and experienced analytic, product analytic space experience um, tells me, brings me to this inevitable, inevitable and sad conclusion that companies that can't sell bottles, sell samples. This is the first sign. If I see a company that doesn't give away perfume samples, but you know, puts a huge price tag on those things, you know, that are two mil um, in size, I know they're not selling anything but those samples probably. So for me, it's a huge red flag in terms of how well the business is doing. I'm kind of curious to know what you guys think because I see those two trends as almost interlocked like they are part of the same thing. More and more hyperlux brands, niche brands, pop up into the scene and they have these ridiculous price tags on bottles like I don't know, back in my day, a really, really good perfume would cost $100. Now, easily, $200, for a bottle of perfume. And I, I must ask, in the, in the world of where 1% has 99% of wealth, who is buying those bottles? And you know what I know as a professional and a lot of parts of similar businesses that make products, they don't. So when you see a company pop up with some hyper inflated value on their product and they sell two milliliter samples for like, you know, comparatively to $500 a bottle, 50, I don't know, like more, I don't know, $70 for two milliliter samples is nothing, right? No, it's $70 for two milliliters, which is absurd. This is absurd. You have, I don't know what have to be in that liquid for it to be even worth quarter of that price. It's just the, the, the chemicals like that probably only exist in virology labs, like secret labs of big farmers that are about to cure, you know, making vaccines for the next generation of HIV or something like that, or, or some like crazy autoimmune diseases. Perfumes? No. I'm, I'm just saying. Call it my not so humble opinion. I'm really curious to see what you think about this practice. I'm, I used to be surprised, then I got pissed. And I think now I just, you know, graduated to be just sardonically laughing every time I see that. So if not for you guys, this video would not be happening. And to be honest, I'm losing interest for any brand that is in the business of selling samples rather than perfumes. I just want to get those things kind of out right in front of you before transitioning to the reviews because, because there is a reason to continue to watch this review. Everything is not lost. I'm not saying that, oh, don't you ever even try to buy anything from Miller Harris. No, I'm just, I'm just using this opportunity um, based on this particular review to point out a much larger trend. 
that is happening. So for me, what's happening with the business practices there, at least what they claim and what I see them do, you know, claim sustainability, high quality raw materials, and then I see $50 for 16 milliliters, so teeny bitty bitty little bit of like these like tester things that are supposed to be free in any department store. You see, it's like, uh, I don't know. But what we really care about is the juice. And here, there's something to discuss. The first one is actually the newest in my collection. I only wore it, I think, two times is Miller Harris Tea Tonic. There's probably up to a hundred, if not more now, so we can say hundreds, of green tea type of scents. High and low of all kinds, subtleties and twists. So this one definitely lays light, a little bit zesty, sharp. So what it has in terms of the notes is bergamot, petit grain and lemon. The kind of lemon that I feel here, I would call more of a, more like the dry acid or, you know, the concentrated lemon acid rather than the fresh lemon. Maybe because, because of bergamot, it becomes much, much more bitter. Middle notes are tea, nutmeg, and peach blossom. I'll be damned, I don't feel any peach blossom. Maybe somewhere behind the scenes, something to round it up. Because the, the green tea fragrances, especially when there's so many of these kind of zesty, eau de cologne type of notes, they could go much, much more bitter, much more austere, and this doesn't. It's a little bit scratchy in a way. We are talking, the base notes are mate, birch, and musk. Goodness. Birch, that's a rare note. To be honest, I don't really feel much beyond the initial opening here. And when I wear it, it wears fairly well in terms of longevity. Again, a lot of these kind of scents that are very bright at the top there's not much left after them if you don't support them with some, with some synthetic vetivers or something grabbing, you know, those stabilizing molecules that really grab onto the skin. But this one, I think, does a fairly good job. So in the sea of green tea scents, this is not the most jasmine, this is not the sweetest, this is not the most bitter, this is not smoked. This is just a very well-balanced scent. To me, it kind of by the, by the make of it, it reminds me something that exclusive lines from Chapar uh, represent. I did have their Magnolia, I do have their Neroli with Vetiver. So something along the lines of, uh, along the lines of like a very cleaned up, scrubbed up, very much architecturally straight lines of exclusive line of Chapar. And you find it here as well. I find this to be a delightful morning fragrance and even more so I like to spray it in the bathroom before I take a shower so when I hop out of the shower I'm met with this zesty refreshing kind of bergamotic green tea smell. Uh, the next one that we have here is I'm just gonna pull randomly uh, Miller Harris Le de, de Rien Okay, this is another point that I want to make. You're gonna see me struggle here because for a UK-based brand, they sure as hell use a lot of convoluted French phrases to name their fragrances. And for the love of God, I don't understand why. If you're proud to be UK-based, why? Just why? <clears throat> anyway, L'Or de Rien is a interesting interesting fragrance that is often debated what's the meaning of it i guess if you call if they used english names for an english brand maybe that would solve that problem who knows 
So a lot of people say that it's like the smell of nothing is their attempt at, you know, in the similar vein of Juliet has a gun, not a perfume, uh, the molecules, you know, that perfume line where, where they have only like these synthetic bases that open up with time on your skin and there's not, not much to it, blah, blah, blah. Like perfume that is not a perfume. But I don't think that's really what they mean here because it definitely has a presence. Yes, this is not loud. This is not particularly musky either, but it has this kind of muffled, creamy entrapment of fruity and something slightly B.O. Maybe they do have synthetic mus musks in there, I don't know. But I swear to God, even though it's not loud and kind of like a new type of fragrance sits close to the skin, gosh, there's some, there's some smell there. I will go further than that. It's not even B.O. This is something coming straight from a toilet. I don't know what it is, but it just gives me some reference to something I never want to smell voluntarily. It kind of like the, 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 the games of olfactory impressions really do vary between how the fragrance develops on your skin and what kind of sensitivity we have in our nose receptors, right? Like the receptors of mm -hmm. smells and taste. But it's definitely not something I can really wear, so I will try to rehome it soon. Um, what they say, Love Tirien is woody, musky, ambery, powdery, balsamic, and earthy. Taupe notice Neroli, I would never in a million years would have guessed that. I don't feel Neroli here as well. Patchouli and oak moss. Again, maybe patchouli, but oak moss? No, not really. Amber notes are amber. Yeah, maybe. But the kind of amber that I find to be kind of like the amber accord that I find to be super jam like kind of like this hard candy synthetic amber i don't particularly appreciate that kind of amber musk and vanilla gosh it's probably the musks but to be honest i'm just ready to let it go i can't, I can't tell you much more than the fact that it gives me the worst kind of um impression the next one is gonna be le Feuille. Saying it right. Le Feuille. Oh, see, comparatively, I actually enjoy it more than tea tonic. Even though Le Feuille is essentially a smell of. Oh, I know why I love it so much. Because it reminds me, <laughs> reminds me of childhood when you could get actually really good tomatoes on the vine. This is the smell of tomato leaves and tomato vine. The good one, the actual, like, the tomatoes that have taste. I know that for a lot of people in the United States, that's a very foreign concept. I don't know why tomatoes and cucumbers, to be honest, are so bad in the United States. But the ones in good old country, the ones that you would grow yourself, the ones that they have taste, that they have, they have smell, that's a very, very reminiscent potent and kind of luxury type of smell. Uh, if you're familiar with Chinoto note, which is like a bitter, I think it's wild orange, bitter orange, it's an Italian type of tree. I find that Chinoto type of fragrances have also share similar thick green, almost something between oily and leathery facets that make me think of like, you know, a very expensive, thick leather, green leather bag. It's just like, if you can make bags from really thick, thick, like magnolia type of leaves, if you could, if you make accessories out of that, that's, that's what it would be. Unfortunately, it can go a little bit more toward pickles. And that's pretty common. 
with green scents sometimes when you add all of those green spices like thyme some facets of dill you know like it just can go into like pickling things pickling juice but I must say this is one of the really good representation of tomato leaves fragrances unfortunately for Miller Harris um, as much as I appreciate Le Feuille, I do have a, a Russian perfume, Brocard, which is called Tomato Leaves. And that smells just as good, maybe lasts a little, a little less, but it costs $10 a bottle. So I appreciate the smell. If you I like the idea of thick green scent, that is not bitter, but that almost like gives you this kind of slightly oily, slightly leathery substance to it. Le Foule is a really good candidate, but I already have a bottle of perfume that does that job really well. So I'll be using it up and probably will just let it go. Next one is La Famille Ottoman. Ottoman? Okay, so... This was a bit of a puzzle for me because this is a clear attempt to make a very Arabic type of scent that's been scrubbed and disinfected to the liking of like Western nose. However, it's incense heavy perfume that even goes like beyond incense. It's smoky, almost oody and things like that. But yet, when I wore it, it didn't really last long on me. So in a way, for people who can't wear these, uh, these kind of smoky Arabic type of perfumes, who don't really know how to s get started around them, something like, la something like that, like La Femme Ottoman, could be a candidate, like a flirtation with the type, with the smoky, oud, heavy incense. But if you already love this kind of family of fragrances, you'll be disappointed because to me, it's a little bit bland in that family of, of, of scents. It just doesn't really offer anything new or unusual and it definitely disappoint in terms of performance. As much as I'm not a kind of beast mode type of person and I do prefer my fragrances to be on a lighter side so I can try many, that I can switch them through a day and that I don't get haunted by them. But this just leaves a lot to be desired. I almost feel like it needs more work in order to give it that something special. Either something special in performance or something special in the pyramid, in the way that it opens up and lives, so it captivates my nose for, for those, I don't know, 30 minutes that it stays on the skin. So that probably I would call a disappointment. I mean, you do you if you actually want to have something that light, like a flirtation with, with you know, smoky, incense perfumes, but you know you can't really wear them for long because maybe they give you a headache or it's just not quite your cup of tea um, that that could be one especially if you find it discounted the next one is gonna be vetiver insulin I'm gonna start smiling now I surprised myself I think I already said in so many videos that I'm more of a gourmand vetiver girl and I, I just I I was taken by surprise that I do like this vetiver because this one is supposed to be dark, smoky, almost harsh, but I love it. This is the kind of smoke that gives me sense of, I don't know, it's like a, almost a dessert. But it's not gourmand. I don't know what's about this oily smokiness that gets me there. It's like a burning house full of vetiver oil. I'm not supposed to like it, but I find it alluring. And surely all of these, but surely this one is 
straight not feminine or masculine either is this is for somebody who loves smoke who loves vetiver it can even seem a little bit brutal but it lure, lures you in the fragrantica says that it's um what is it fresh and spicy but to be honest i don't find anything fresh about it to me it's like if if a whiff of smoke can be considered fresh maybe um no for me i guess top notes are bergamot black pepper cardamom and alemi middle notes are iris lavender hmm, maybe that's why and amber base notes are vetiver tonka bean and oak moss maybe that's it amber plus lavender plus cardamom i love cardamom love black pepper can't really say that i feel each of those notes in here if i really start thinking about it and keep repeating the notes maybe i will but to be completely honest it's like a burning house where i guess the desserts are ready like that you just made the coffee you put the desserts on those little beautiful plates and you like <laughs> you put like a burning stick with bit of oil in it and then you set the room on fire that's that's what i smell in it and i love it this is definitely going to wish list as it is right now i have almost too many vetiver scents to really justify purchase of a whole full-size bottle so when i'm done with at least one bottle of my vetivers we'll see we'll see maybe maybe that will be it because it's definitely high quality work and it's unique to what i to what i smelled in the vetiver space okay this one is Pourier d'une soir. I'm just gonna leave it there. We're just gonna hang in there, and if I completely butchered the name, we're all gonna collectively pretend I didn't say anything at all. This, again, I was surprised to really love because it's so girly. You know me, I'm not really into anything super fruity or super sweet. But this is so charming. First of all, because it's the kind of fruity sweetness that I I kept walking around like it reminds me of something. It reminds me of something. It's something. But what is it? And eventually I got it. It's a birch tree juice. I was privileged in my childhood to actually drink birch tree juice. It's a pretty vandalistic type of procedure. You kind of cut a hole in the birch tree, usually do it during the spring rain season, that the trees are kind of starting to grow leaves. There's a lot of water, a lot of, a lot of kind of like circulation happening within the tree. You make a hole, you put like a little tube in there and you get the birch tree juice. People do drink it. It's it's very Japanese in the way that like if you if you want to classify notes because it's delightful almost divine but it's very subtle it's semi-sweet it's almost a little bit flowery or fruity it's hard to tell but it's just you know it's like the, the art of sushi or like the art of like Japanese cuisine it, it's the subtleties of flavors, subtleties of everything that's in that particular medium. Um, I don't think it's even possible to find birch tree juice anymore and probably for a good reason, but it just brought me back. It brought me back decades of my life. It's quite, it's quite something else, but it's not all that there is there. The top notes are bergamot, blackcurrant, rum, maybe maybe because again it's both soft nudie kind of cuddly but yet it's not your usual kind of i don't know pink pepper plus rose type of sweets so bergamot blackcurrant rum pear i think that's the 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 
core of the fruitiness in here, it's pear. Spun sugar, tajitis, I don't know what that is. Um, Turkish rose, spices, peony and birch. Yes, birch. Uh, base notes are ambrette, musk mallow, white cedar extract and cashmere wood. Yeah, so these kind of scents I very commonly call like sweater weather kind of scents they are not amber in dark and rich there are those are kind of like nudie somewhat flirty cuddly scents there's nothing that is sticking out of them they're not too sweet they're not too fresh they're not too spicy they're just very like it's a pink fluff like a cloud of pink fluff if you wish there are a lot of scents like that if you're curious uh, you can watch my video about my nude scents, some of them I described there. A perfect example that was always on my mind is La Mia Perla by La Perla. This is not quite that, this is way more sophisticated than La Mia Perla by La Perla. La Mia Perla by La Perla is mostly just like vanilla ice cream with a little bit of spice. This though, birch, pear. Ah, oh, and something of a I guess Kashmir Woody Accord. White cedar and Kashmir wood. I believe it. Maybe the rose is also there. A rose has so many faces and it, it's almost in every other perfume, so I can't really tell. I wouldn't really call it rose-centric perfume at all. I would actually say the most delicious combination of white rum, birch tree, and pear. Kind of based on light aromatic woods love it needless to say love it want it so badly i don't have anything even close to this in my collection so i'm gonna be wearing the subscribers gift all eight mil to the ground and then i'll start hunting for the bottle i already looked it up most of these perfumes you can find either decants off or you can find the bottles in the dis online discount stores not this one the Du soir. I need to learn how to do the straight face. That one is pretty expensive or just absent. So maybe it's discontinued, maybe it's just like a called favorite. Let's actually check this. I am already on the Miller Harris website and they claim to know what their top sellers are. So the top sellers according to them is Lumière Tori, Scherzo, the newer ones which is like Blousy, Bright and Rock, that's like a different, um, well it's like finally English names, thank you, Bright and Rock, Blousy, Violet, Ida, Percentile, then Rose Silence and Tea Tonic. So actually the Pear and Birch and Rum scent is not really their best seller. Hmm. I'm surprised that Tea Tonic is a bestseller. Even more surprised that Rose Silence is a bestseller because to me, that rose is very. It's fine. It's just very generic. Um, and to be honest, so is Tea Tonic. Both are good, refreshing kind of body spray type of scents. Perfect for, <laughs> so to speak, the youngsters or just anybody who who really prefers light scents. If you are like a Jo Malone kind of gal or, 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 or man, you probably would enjoy some of their lighter cologne type of scents. And Rose Silence and Tea Tonic are definitely the good examples of that. But when it comes to something truly interesting, the two that I find absolutely astonishing in the way how unique and interesting they are, is Vetiver Insolent and Prier d'un Soir. So these two, mwah, love it. Absolutely love it, really want a full bottle. All right, I was honest with you. I shared my opinions about the business, the namings, the fragrances themselves. Now you share yours. Let me know if you have any bottles by them. Are you curious to try them? What do you think about sample selling? I don't know, are you, how much are you willing to pay for two milliliters of a fragrance just to try it so you don't, you know, so you have a chance to sample it before you make a decision on a full-size bottle? 
yeah, just like I'm just curious. I'm just curious what opinions are out there because on one hand, I don't think I'm the only one who is a little bit speechless about what the perfume market is becoming. On the other hand, maybe it's all right. Maybe it's just the way it's supposed to be. After all, Sunbird and all of those sampling programs that other big stores have, they exist for a reason. Maybe it's maybe all of us, all of the companies should be transitioning to just selling smaller smaller sizes. Maybe selling a 2 milliliter perfume as a legitimate product just like any any other and we should probably all shift toward travel sizes and just swap them every month because in a way that's what Sandbird really advocates for right like you get yourself a decant you wear it for a month and you move on to something else so on one hand that makes perfect sense to me and I'm honestly kind of thinking that I have so many beautiful amazing decanted perfumes now that I don't really need to buy a single new bottle and like I'm set wearing what I have till the day I die if I really want to get good use of my perfume collection so buying decants makes all the sense in the world but at the same time as I shared earlier I'm just conflicted I'm just conflicted when I see those plastic or glass teeny teeny tiny vials being sold for $50 I don't know I don't know you let me know what you think of it all right thank you so much for your attention and I'll see you in the next video please subscribe if you haven't yet and also if you could please share my video with other perfume lovers that you know I would really appreciate your support and patronage thank you so much for watching